Hey guys, Professor Bell, Comic Book University, and Superman, issue number 13. Nice. Nice. Um, no backtracking, but, you know, it's kind of like a pendulum swing when it comes to Bendis. Okay, I'm going back the other way in this one. Um, this is a year, in the vil year of the villain, the offer, so cool, cool. We're going to get into that also. I'm going to actually spoil that. But for now, oh, this is also the issue where I'm going to talk about um, the, the, the spoiler for Catwoman. Um, the Unity Saga, The House of L, Part 7. Brian Michael Bendis is the writer. Brandon Peterson on art for some of the pages. Ivan Race on the art for other pages. Joe Prado does the inks on some of the pages. Um, on Ivan Reese's pages specifically. Joe, uh, bleh, Alex Sinclair does the colors. Dave Sharp does the letters. Reese Prado and Sinclair does the cover. And Adam Hughes does the variant cover. Um, and of course, Jerry Siegel, Joe Schuster created Superman. So we get a whole lot more in depth into Jor-El, Superman's father, his, his birth father in this story. Um, again, I don't like it. I don't like it. I just don't like it. I don't feel that you need to be changing Superman's story. And it's such a pretentious thing to do that it's like Superman's stories get, uh, Superman's origin gets changed. Krypton's origin gets changed. Everything's origin gets changed. And then you see Brian Michael Bendis with that freaking wicked, over-enthusiastic smile that he's got back there was just like, God damn it, Bendis. Um, that being said, if you're going to change a story for a character whose story shouldn't have been told, this is probably how you do it. Um, yeah, this new version of Jor-El, which, mind you, to the best of my knowledge, Bendis didn't uh, order the, the these changes to, to Jor-El. Um, before Bendis came over officially to DC, uh, the previous writers had changed Jor-El's history a little bit, uh, decided that he's actually still alive and he's a little bit crazy and yeah, so on and so forth, etc., cetera, et cetera. Uh, I don't know if, you know, Bendis was talking behind the scenes to Dan Didio and said, hey, listen, can you tell the current guys in Superman to, to throw Jor-El in it and have him do this and that and the other thing and all these other cool things? Could you do that? I don't know if that happened. I don't know anything behind the scenes. I don't act like I know anything behind the scenes. Um, I'm, I'm willing to be honest with how little I know about what's going on behind the freaky scenes. Um, do you remember the, the council that, uh, that Rogal Zar was talking to in a, a little while ago, like last year, I think, or, or close to a year ago, um, back when Bendis first started, I don't remember if it was the, the earliest issues of Superman or if it was actually in the Man of Steel comics prior to that. But, uh, you know, that six issue limited series. But Rogel Zar was talking to a huge council of people, holograms of people. Uh, a, a, a person from Ran, a person from um, one of the Guardians, uh, somebody from, I think it was somebody from Gem World. They also had, they had a whole bunch of different people, council elders, right? A Thanagarian. They had a whole bunch of people on this council. And uh, it was like a secret cabal. I don't remember if Jarrell was one of those people or not. I'd have to go back and actually find out which issue it was and then find that issue in my box, and I'm just not interested in doing that right now. Um, what I did get, however, was that Jarrell was indeed a member of that secret council. So he's got some dirt. So there's a lot of people in these cabals who want Jarrell dead because he knows a little bit too much. As it stands, what happened to Krypton is a bit of a mystery at this point. Was it the original problems that we talked about? You know, the sun going out of the way and the, 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 the Black Order. Uh, was it the Black Order? Not the Black Order. The Black something. Um, uh, that, that terrorist organization doing what they were doing. What was the reason for Krypton blowing up? Mm -hmm. But there were threats made in this. Krypton was deemed necessary to be destroyed, and it seems as though it was deemed necessary to be destroyed by the elders, by by the 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 um the cabal in here, minus Jor-El. They wanted a lot handled here to cover up certain secrets. Uh, I gotta admit, I'm intrigued. I am crazy intrigued over this. Um, 
saying that Krypton, you know, an entire planet had to be destroyed. Like, this is that nonsense that you hear from CIA operatives, from politicians, from big high up businessmen who feign ignorance. But, oh, they knew. They knew. You know what I'm saying? This is that political intrigue that just, this is that higher level of thinking that we had to wait for Bendis to finally get to. Look, man, I ain't nowhere near an apology that, that Bendis said that we're going to be apologizing to him at some point. I ain't nowhere near that. But I can see where maybe, maybe, I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, <laughs> maybe, all right? This this does look really good. I, I got to admit, man, listen, I've been tired for the past couple of weeks. Too many comic books, way too many comic books this week. I decided to try and rectify that by trying to read the comic books that I like the least first to try and get a different perspective on it. Maybe that's changing this. This is the third comic book that I'm reading this week. Make sure you check out uh, the fourth comic book I'm reading this week. Make sure you check out Event Leviathan, also by Bendis. Make sure you check out a lot by Bendis this week. Bendis is kicking some ass this week. Um, he's got a lot of books out this week and a lot of books that tie into his books this week. And it's really good. They're all really good. Yes, including this one. Um... We're starting to see more of Rogue Alzar's part in how Krypton was destroyed. Um, make sure you also check out Supergirl that just came out this week. That's issue number 32. I did a review on that, but also don't forget to check out Comic Boom. He's going to do a much more extensive review, I would imagine. This is solid craftsmanship, man. This is a bad-ass book. That's just, first off, you can't argue with the art in this. Go ahead, try, get shot down, okay? That's exactly what's gonna happen. You, you try and fly with that nonsense, there's gonna be people on the bottom thinking you're the Red Baron and you're over Australia. Oops, ba 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 bow See ya, mate. Um, this gorgeous book. But as far as what is offered in this book, yeah, I'm, I'm impressed. I really am. <laughs> Jarrell just comes off as like, he's the guy that you you need to root for because somehow he's the only person who's going to keep Krypton safe. Or does he have the capacity to do that in the first place? But you know that the whole reason why it's going down also is, is partially his fault because he decided to be part of this evil cabal. And Superman, as he often does, and I love me some Superman, fight me, uh, he gets on his high horse every so often. Well, he does so in this also. And jor is right there. Because I'm thinking to myself, whoa, Supes, the things that you're saying, you did that stuff with the Justice League too. I didn't need to think any of that stuff. jor says it. This is a good comic book. Where nobody's safe. Where nobody's ideals are safe. All right. Um, yeah. I'm Maybe I'm going to have to start reading Superman first <laughs> from now on. You have to do the same thing with action comics. Just see what's up, okay? Just, just, just not get so tired by the time I get to these things. Because let's be realistic, all right? Uh, oh, I promised I would spoil, um, what do you call it, the, uh, the, the ending of this. I am not disappointed to see not only that it's Lois Lane who gets the offer from Lex Luthor, but also how the whole conversation goes. Artisan level, all right? This is... Oh, God, this is this is the pillars of Rome, Hellen, Hellenistic and Hellenic. All right. Um, I'm enjoying this. I'm, like I said, I'm going to have to start reading some Bendis stuff first. OK, early, especially these Superman books. You get tired reading a book and especially with Marvel and DC books where it's these same characters, who you know, they're not really going to change. And then when you do see some change, sometimes you want to fight that change because we are all kind of a part of the problem. I admit when I'm a part of the problem also. I want to see change, but I get pissed off when I see change. Um, I still have some, some problems with some of the issues that I happened before, but I also have to be honest, uh, further honest, uh, there's some things that Bendis said that I decide to venture into looking up myself. Bendis says, some people hate what I do and they're really pissed off. Some people love what I do and they're really excited. Uh, so it seems to be a pretty 50-50 split. 
Well, when you actually go, I make it a habit to not go into other people's stuff and look at, you know, what they're doing. I don't want to look at other people's videos or written reviews or anything. I'm not interested in doing that because I don't want anything that they say to rub off onto me. I don't want their influence to rub off onto me. I enjoy just being my own character, my own person. Um, I, I can't deliver authenticity if I'm I'm looking at other people's stuff. But I, I made a command decision to go in and look at other people's stuff. And Bendis is right. Now, I got to be honest, you know, again, I got to be honest, which means I'm going to flip the script on this again. While Bendis is right that some people praise and some people dislike, the people who dislike are actually giving reasons. The people who like... I'm seeing very shallow reasons, if I'm seeing reasons at all, why they like something, which means that it's not as not as valid, no, because you don't have to validate what you like and what you don't like, but it doesn't seem as real. It doesn't seem as honest. So yeah, um, the I, I said what I have to say, no need to reiterate it, but that being said, Maybe one of these days I will go back and look at some of these comic books again. I own them. Might as well go back and look at them again. But for now, I'm just happy to know that this issue was a great issue. And I got to remember to start reading Bendis comic books first. All right, guys, I'm done. Professor Bill Comic Book University. Class dismissed.